Hey, what's going on again, everybody? John here with Knight and Shining Armor Paint Correction, Ceramic Coatings, and Detailing. Today we have a 2003 Mustang that we coated with Fireball Scylla not quite a year ago. And the owner brought it in for maintenance and let us know that he had a little snafu with, I don't know if it was a garage door or something in the garage. And there's some paint transfer here, or at least that's what we hope it is. We're going to start with Tax System Tar Zero to see if it'll remove the paint transfer, if that's what it is. I mean, we could use lacquer thinner, but we don't want to affect the ceramic coating at all. And lacquer thinner most certainly will affect the coating in one way or another. That's about the harshest chemical you could ever throw on the surface of your clear coat. And the Tar Zero looked like it removed a little bit of the transfer. So we thought we'd give it another spray and let it soak for just a split second or so, or five, ten seconds. See what it would do. And go from there. As we can see, we're just using a generic microfiber. And we realized that that wasn't doing what we needed to do so we still wanted to stay with the least aggressive method possible so we are using angel wax perfect polish and a rupes white ultra fine foam pad and angel wax perfect polish does not have enough abrasive in it to remove a hair from a gnat's behind we are hoping that it doesn't remove the coating but there are no guarantees because we are applying a polisher to a coating. So we're going to take our time here and see what we can do to make this scratch go away or paint transfer. The last thing we want to do is wet sand the thing. Wet sanding it in any way, size, shape, or form will absolutely just remove the coating. And after the first pass, it made a huge dent, so to speak, in this mark or scratch or paint transfer or whatever it is. So we were pretty sure that we were going to end up removing the coating where we were polishing. But like I said earlier, we had our fingers crossed. The important thing was to get this mark out and hopefully not having to wet sand on a 21 year old car. And you may notice as this video rolls along that certain aspects of this video are sped up to twice the normal rate. That was to keep the length of the video down, especially when I'm rubbing by hand. That's sped up to two times the normal rate. As you can see, this is a little bit of a tedious process. There's not a lot of abrasive in this stuff. We could have gone more aggressive, but the cardinal rule is to start with the least aggressive method possible and see if you can get it to work. And it's clearly working. It's just taking a little bit of elbow grease and some effort on our part to get it done.
you will see that we go back and forth between the polisher with the ultra fine white Rupes pad and doing it by hand. It was really an interesting trick to try to get in the crevice of that paint transfer because it really wasn't a scratch. You couldn't feel it with your fingernail, but it did not want to remove for anything. And typically Perfect Polish or even the Tar Zero will make mincemeat out of a paint transfer. Some of you may be asking what polisher this is. This is the Flex PXE80 with the 12 millimeter throw attachment in it with a three inch pad. We've had this polisher for about three years. It was our first cordless polisher and this thing is a beast. We actually bought a second 12 millimeter throw attachment to be able to use with the three inch, excuse me, the one inch pad so we didn't constantly have to change the backing plate all the time. That makes the quick change practically immediate. You want to go to a one inch pad or a two inch pad. The more throw attachments that you have, the quicker it is. And let's be honest folks, in this business, time is money when it comes to everything. Keep going back and forth here. Gonna go back to the polisher here in a little bit. I was trying to save the coating for the customer. And the longer this went on, the more doubts that I had that the coating would still be there, but you never know. Sometimes strange things do happen. But we shall see if it has a coating on it or not when we're done. I think if we go to the polisher here just one last time. We'll have this thing knocked out of the park. It's almost completely gone. There was two little minute marks. I know you're not supposed to play hero in this business. Thought we'd just give it one more go around to see if we could get those two tiny marks to disappear. We got them to disappear just enough that it would satisfy me if it was my car. We're going to spray a little bit of water here. See if we have a coating left or not. And at first glance doing the stream is like, oh, maybe there is. But when we put it into a spray pattern for beads and it sheeted, we felt that there just wasn't enough coating there to give it a chance to, you know, that it would fail right there. Think, so we're going to reapply the coating on this part of the vehicle. And that way these spots where they've been polished will be fully protected again. So that means we're going to have to bust out the panel prep here, which is Fireball Reborn. We tend to stay in the family of panel preps when applying a certain brand of a coating. 
In this case, it's Fireball to Fireball. And the coating that was originally installed was Fireball Scylla, which is a five-year coating. Make sure we shake it up. Throw a little bit on a microfiber applicator. Make an X, make our box, fill it in, and then it's a waiting game. This is the way we would initially test our test spot to see how far we could go with the coating. So we're waiting for it to just to be slightly grabby. And it was a cool day. Had the door open. It was like 60 degrees. So I'm sure that we were going to be 5 to 8 minutes before it was time to wipe off the transfer solution from the coating. Still checking. Not quite ready yet. So we'll keep on waiting. Normally if we were doing a whole vehicle or a couple panels or whatever it is, we'd be running a timer. But since it's just this one little spot here, why? We're just playing the waiting game. To make the video as short as possible, I did cut out a big chunk of the wait. It was around eight and a half to nine minutes. I'm gonna come back in here and check one more time. See if the coating's ready to be wiped off or not. We checked it, it's like, oh yeah, it's grabby, so we're gonna go ahead and wipe it off. Then we have to let that cure for a minimum of four hours before we can put fireball pirouette on it so we can send it off to the customer. And here this Mustang is outside. We went ahead and maintained it while I was here. This thing looks absolutely gorgeous. Once again, my name is John. We are Night and Shining Armor Paint Correction, Ceramic Coatings, and Detailing. We hope you like these videos. Please give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. We will catch everybody in the next video. See you all soon.